Very, very exciting to uh, get to do video shows now. They're much it's, better on video. Um, it's a lot more fun for me. That way I can, like, throw stuff at you and stuff. Yeah, we can actually see each other for yeah. once. Yeah. So it's like we're in Chicago after All Out in the hotel room. <laughs> it is like we're in Chicago after All Out in the hotel room, isn't it? Yes. Well, <laughs> on that on that topic, the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega were at Dynamite tonight. Yes. And there was They were not a, on the show. They were just... But they showed a video of them. Yeah, they, they showed up. They uh, hung out with everybody backstage, and everybody was very happy to see each other. And then there was a video... On the on the show, which was essentially, you know, shots from the original press conference announcing the uh, formation of AEW. They, and, they actually had some stuff from the uh, from New Year's Eve at the Tokyo Dome, in yep. front of the Tokyo Dome at the Tokyo Dome Hotel. So they had a bunch of photos, and then the photos were shown on the screen, and then the uh, Young Bucks and Kenny burned up and were removed they, they, from the they photos. They vanished from all the photos. Yeah, Kenny winning the championship, Young Bucks winning championships. Yeah. Yep. So uh, it was very interesting. And I don't well, know. Obviously, the, obviously what they're they'll doing, be back but soon. They're back. Yep, they're back. They'll be back soon, which is a question of like which week, um, and it probably sooner than later, and um, which adds depth to the pay per view show. Um, you one would think that the natural match would be Young Bucks and Kenny Omega against Pentagon Phoenix and Pac, right? I think so. Title. Yeah, I mean, they I mean, that'd be the natural match to debut them as yep. far as on the pay per view. Yep. I don't know that that's happening. But I'm just saying, you know. When I think of the logic of how they left and they had those the trios titles and these guys are the new champions, so that makes sense. Now, somebody who is not going to be back in the foreseeable future appears to be CM Punk. And today, there was a story that came out that was allegedly from his camp, where we now well, it have was from, it was from his camp because it was okay. So, so you know, I mean, all along, tell us I, what I, happened here. I don't know everything that happened. Well, but, tell us okay. what, what, what was, okay, so, what was so, reported so, so, today by Nick Hausman. Okay, so Nick Hausman was sitting right in front of us. So it's like the press conference. He was sitting like literally right in front of me. And he was the guy who actually Punk went off on first until he found out that Nick Hausman and Colt Cabana weren't friends. And they are not friends. Um, they had they, they had probably been, I don't know if it was acquaintances or whatever. I don't know the exact thing of the relationship. But they were very much not friends, and Punk didn't know it. And then later, I guess, Punk investigated and found out that they were not friends at all and apologized to him. This was some time back, you know, for, for doing that. So that happened. And then uh, the investigation is over. And I think it's very clear by who's back and who's not back what happened, you know, what the investigation found out. And uh, Punk or someone, someone, someone in the Punk camp uh, told Nick Hausman um, a bunch of stuff. And you know all the key stuff? I can kind of discuss it through. But, um, you know, the... Um, I think the key thing is a story well, there's, that... There's, there's, a, there's a couple of things. I mean, the, When the, the door was, uh, and they use the term again, kicked open. Which it was not. Which it was not. But when the door was kicked open, and I actually think it was in quotation marks, uh, Larry the dog was hit it's in the face dog. by the door... And the claim was that uh, he was taken it, to the vet and uh, needed work done on his teeth. Well, the the story was that the, that the that the door loosened his teeth and that he needed to take the teeth out. But the other stuff, and there was a bunch of other stuff, is is he did not think that what happened at the scrum was that big of a deal. That he was uh, he was afraid in the uh, May match at Double or Nothing that Adam Page would shoot on him he didn't know if it was going to be a worked match um and there was that and um uh, what other things well let me let me before he you go any further about, uh, he also actually hold on about, i gotta i want to address the, one thing first one the, thing the, the, the illinois law about um that he discussed well Did, but before we get to the illinois law i i gotta say one thing so he said, allegedly, that uh, he did not feel that the the scrum was, uh, what was the term that was used? Wasn't that big of a deal. Wasn't that know. big of a deal. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I want to bring this up because, you know, there was a, there's like a 5,000 page uh, thread on our board about this. And uh, th there are people that really are saying, it feels like 5,000. And uh, and there are people that, that say, you know, uh, well... 
really, it's all the Bucks' fault because they should have known not to go into that locker room when he was in such a mood. And uh, I was there as you were as well. And uh, and granted, now you know Punk saying that he didn't think it was that big a deal. But if you remember, Dave, he uh, he opened that press conference. He was in a mood, and he went off, and he got a lot of stuff off of his chest. Yeah. But uh, by the time he was done, I mean he finished up his donuts, and if I recall correctly, the last words he said on the way out were, "I know it may be hard to believe, but I'm actually a really nice guy." And he smiled and he waved at everybody. And he did not leave that room in in any sort of, oh, man, don't go in this guy's locker room right now. Like, he's fuming. I well, mean, he left like he got some stuff off his chest and was, uh, you know, he, did, he was he, just he, done. He did, he did say, you know, if you have anything to say to me, say it to my – come come and say it to my face. He my invited doors, people to come talk to open. him. Yes. My door is open. Yeah. Yes. So, I mean, my, my point here is is, number one, he didn't leave in such a manner where it would be – you know, why, how, how, why would you possibly go see him after that press conference? He left in a fine mood, A. Well, I, I, I would, I, I mean. He left in what appeared I, I, to be a fine mood. Okay, okay, okay. And he I, did say that he didn't think it was a big deal. So I actually believe that he didn't think it was that big a deal. Well, if he didn't think it was a big deal, then what happened after? Well, I mean, that's the question. That's the I, question. I, That's the crux I mean, of this I, entire I, thing. I I think he thought the whole thing was a big deal because if he didn't think it was a big deal, he would have he wouldn't have, you know, done what he did at the in in the scrum to begin with. He would have talked about MJ. Well, he thought he all that stuff was his, a big deal. He would have, but I I don't think that he thought he that it was going to lead to a fight when he was doing that at the scrum. Oh no 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 no. Well, well yeah, but the only person who who led to a fight was him. I mean, it wasn't. Well, like, yeah, whatever happened happened. No, nobody else was gonna lead to a fight nobody else was looking for a fight they were some people were, were clearly not happy with what he said which is you know kind of understandable including i'm sure the promoter who was sitting right next to him and looked very uncomfortable the entire time well everybody was a little bit uncomfortable that night so um i mean the only thing so so among the stuff i mean i, I is everyone is still banned from talking publicly about what happened and the situation the investigation is over and you can tell by who's back and by who's not back and by you know also kind of like what punk said you know he mentioned um you know he mentioned that the investigation never talked to lucy guy which is true they never did for whatever reason and i don't have a you know a reason but but they never did and I'd heard that, and I'd written, I'd written that, and you know, talked about that already. But um, he mentioned that, which would, which would tell you that you know he was not happy with the results of the investigation. And based on again, who is back and who is not back, that will tell you essentially what the investigation found. Because if what happened happened as he claimed, it would be the other way around. You know, he would be the one back, and they would be the ones not back. So I think that that's a pretty clear thing as far as what the investigation found. And even he would have, in an even fight, it's hard to say where the loyalty would go because, um, you know, the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega did help start the company, but Punk was the biggest drawing card in the company. And the biggest drawing card always has an advantage in any kind of a situation like this. So there is that. Um, the only thing that I did hear is that um, the response to uh, what was said was basically, it's an outright lie. I did have that told to me, but they could not, um, you know, nobody could really say anything more, you know, as far as the dog thing goes. I mean, the thing that I find the most interesting about the dog thing, and again, I, I, I wasn't there, so I don't want to go too strong on this, but I have heard from his side, you know, on and off for, you know, since the since a couple of days right after it happened, like, like two days after it happened, probably, and multiple times since then, you know, what happened, their version, their side, and none of this, like, like, you know, the idea was always that the Bucks came in and it was going to turn into a fight, and it just happened that he threw the first punch. Um, but it was the other, if, if it wasn't him, the other guys would have. That was always the side of him, that, that you know, that it was going to be a fight, so I swung first, but they came in trying to be intimidating and that led to everything. And then, you know, Chris guy um, acted the way he did 
because you know his wife was on crutches and had a broken foot and was taking care of the dog but never in seven weeks have i heard anyone mention anything about the door opening hitting the dog the dog being hurt or anything like that that like i just find that one again i just find that so weird the people who are that again the side that was trying to defend him all along never brought that up once and now all of a sudden that's the story and so it's and again like i said the other side just called it a lie so um but i you know again you know whatever and the investigation's over and there were you know again there were a lot of witnesses to it and um you know they talked to there were probably a dozen people in that room i heard within like moments well, from yeah, but there were a few that were right there, you yeah. know, when it, it happened. You know, the, I mean, several. So not not a not a big amount. I mean, yeah, as soon as the thing started happening, then yeah, there was all those people who all got suspended at first. Yeah, that were all in the room. So I mean, I don't know. What, what's do you have any kind of thoughts on that? I I have no thoughts other than we'll just have to see what happens with CM Punk because. You know, well, he can't not, be back he's not, anyway. He's not, he's not, he's not going to be back. He's, he's, injured. he's injured. And so, you know, the big question will be when he is no longer injured, is there a buyout? Is there not a buyout? Is he brought back? Is he fired? I think those are the options that we have on the table. Well, they were nego- they've been negotiating a buyout for some time. You know, I don't know if that's finalized. And perhaps boy, with all this happening, maybe it, it was just finalized. And that's why he talked, you know, or his people talked. And, um, you know, they were backstage at the show and they're back so and it's no coincidence that that this story broke on the day that they came back i don't you know i mean that's that's too much of a coincidence so i think that it's the thing was closed and again i don't know what he is allowed to say publicly as in punk but uh, i do know that the other guys are not allowed to talk about it and so you're not going to get anything from them um for you know i mean i don't know Maybe never, you know, but certainly not anytime soon. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts, and also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com, 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.